Hi, Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter and here's another interview in my series of interviews with subscribers. Enjoy! Okay, so today I have a special guest all the way from Scotland by way of of uh, Toronto, isn't it? Uh, you yeah. in? Yeah, my, my neck of the woods as well. Yeah. I just live a little ways outside of Toronto, so know it all very well. And uh, so this is Kristen, and is it Hubert? Yeah, Hubert. Okay. I said right. that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I've said your name now, so can you give us a little bit more specifics about where you're located? Yeah, so I'm, I'm in Edinburgh in Scotland. So that's the capital city of, of Scotland. Um, and I've been here for about 19 years, <laughs> but um, still sound Canadian. Uh, yeah, no, I'm from Toronto originally. And actually my, um, my grandmother lived in Whitby. So I've been to Oshawa. So, so <laughs> yeah, okay. I know where you are. Yeah, <laughs> We've got a lot of connections here right off yeah. the top. First of all, I have been to Edinburgh. It was many, many years ago. It was when I way back, oh, probably now 25 or 30 years ago since the last time I was there. Uh, beautiful little city. Um, well, it's not that little. Um, and you <laughs> said <Toronto. laughs> my grandmother lived in Whitby. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, that's my hometown. Whitby. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're talking about Whitby, Ontario, right? Not Whitby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Whitby, Ontario. She was on Center Street. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I was on Roslyn Road and... Uh, <laughs> Center Street went up to my street as oh, well. So, yeah. That's a, what was your what's your grandmother's last name? Or Pope. What? Pope. Okay. Sadie was your name. Yeah. Yeah. She wasn't a quilter though or anything like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I don't really know anybody with that last name in Whitby in yeah. the years that I grew up there. But anyways, just there's a coincidence again. Yeah. And I noticed <laughs> that uh, you have not acquired a Scots accent yet. <laughs> after 19. No, I think I don't know. I think maybe you have to do it as a child or something I think it, it has changed a little bit and some people do like remark on the phrasing and and oh, things right. that I use and when I talk to my sister she's still in Canada and she's like what are you saying but um <laughs> but no I don't have the accent yeah so how did you end up in Scotland uh so I did a year of um my undergrad in Aberystwyth in Wales which is like on the the one coast nowhere near Edinburgh but anyway um <laughs> But I had a lot of free time, so I went and explored everywhere, and I really liked Edinburgh. It's like it's like a really good compact size. There's lots going on. They've got the festivals and stuff, but it's not huge. And um, and anyway, my mother was from Clydebank as well as my grandmother, uh, so I was able to come without a visa and stuff like that once I, oh, okay. once I graduated. Yeah. Well, in 19 years, never came back. Yeah. Home. <laughs> I visited, but well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, well, it is, it is a lovely city. There's uh, no two ways about it. And the history is incredible. That's there and everything. But anyways, I could go on for days about I know, I know. memory lane, but let's move <laughs> on here. So how long have you been, do you quilt and sew or do you just quilt? Um, kind of both. I don't sew clothing. Okay. So, but I've, I've kind of sewn longer than I've quilted, but the sewing I did before I quilted was like, uh, what do you call it? Like, functional like repairing something or making right. a cushion like very small scale but I started quilting it was either the month before the first lockdown or it was during lockdown <laughs> basically <laughs> at exactly the same time it was like that March um and then so if I, I might have started right before but then like obviously with all the stress of everything quilting right. was the good like you know uh, uh distraction yeah it kind of so became this obsession since then right so you're a relatively new quilter in a way Fair so am know. i yeah. i'm i yeah. started about 2017 2018 and uh i've never sewn in my life so i plunged right into quilting wow. it's not about yeah. me it's about you so how did you get started in quilting um i can't even remember why i started <laughs> i mean i just um i've got um as well as um the the channel and the blog I have that's about quilting before that I did an upcycling blog so it was probably something to do with that and I was trying to like reuse something and then I landed on something and then, so basically my first quilt was like I called it my learner's quilt right um it was basically just taking a whole bunch of free patterns off the internet 
and using the same fabric, but I didn't know what I was doing. So it was like upholstery fabric <laughs> um, <laughs> and making different blocks. And then I put it together with towels as batting and <laughs> some other upholstery fabric on the back. It's so heavy. <laughs> and I did it like quilt as you go, but I didn't like the first quilt as you go thing I did the first time. So then I changed, oh my goodness. It was like, it, <laughs> it's a quilt, but it's, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, you jumped right in there and oh my God, upholstery yeah. fabric and towels, you know. the whole bit. This thing must be, talk about a weighted blanket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that must be, yeah. but that, you know, Everybody starts like that too. Yeah, my, yeah. <laughs> my first quilt, I saw a book. I was in a quilt store, didn't know anything about it. And then I just followed the instructions in the book. And actually it didn't turn out too bad for my first effort, but I really didn't have a clue. So, you yeah. know, I was checking out YouTube and everything like that for ideas. So did anyone in your family uh, do any quilting or did they influence you in any way that got you into sewing or quilting? They didn't quilt. Um... But both my mom and my grandma sewed. So my mom, I know she made some of her own clothes, but she passed when I was fairly young. And then my grandma, she I didn't see her like make her own clothes, but she would like sew things. She taught me to knit. She had some like really random repairs on some of her pajamas and things <laughs> that she did. Like, so I guess it gave me the sense that like, you can do that and people do that. And right. So it so me in a way, but they didn't quilt, yeah. But they, but they didn't quilt. No, 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 no. So you just stumbled upon this on your own. Well, I know. Yeah. Okay. So um, to date, then, since you've only been really quilting, what, three years? Yeah. About that. Now, do you two. have a two? Yeah. two? Is it only two? Do you have yeah. a favorite creation that you've made? Yeah. Yeah. So my favorite is when it's um when I designed. It's called the X marks the scrap quilt, and it's for like basically scraps. So first you kind of sew this, a whole bunch of little scraps onto some matting machine tape. And then um, I've got, I put them in like really simple foundation paper piece blocks. And um, and then the, I've got it here, but I don't know whether you'd be able to see it very well. Um, I'm gonna just fold it up, but it, basically though, that's kind of what the- Oh yeah, yeah. That's really nice. Like. And you that use different, good. like just different, um, different low volume fabrics for the background. So it's like a total scrap buster kind of thing. But that's my favorite. That's the one I kind of have on my chair in this room, like my, my work chair with my laptop and stuff, yeah. Right, well, that's that's fine. And I know that since your, your YouTube channel is called Scrap, uh, scrap Fabric Love, um, yeah. that, you, and I've been watching your videos and things and I see you do a lot of things with scraps. And actually I love working with scraps too. You know, like I just like, it, it's very freeing if you're not even following a pattern you're just sewing pieces together making your fabric and you never know what's going to turn out so yeah I like that and, it, and it's a great way you were talking about doing upcycling and things like that yeah. previously so it's a great way you know because there's a lot of waste in fabric mm -hmm. when you're making things so and yeah. as, as quilters we tend to be very loath about getting rid of our scraps <laughs> they multiply don't they you make a scrap yeah. quilt figuring you're getting rid of a lot of them and you've got more yeah, i've never figured that. out how that works <laughs> yeah so um what type of quilter would you describe yourself as in terms of your style is it traditional modern uh grungy experimental <laughs> i don't know probably my I, I would say kind of like modern yeah, scrappy modern, if I was going to be kind of pretentious about it, maybe like cohesive scrappy. I don't know. I like well, that's the term. No, I don't like it like um, where you just throw everything at the one quilt kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I like to like break it up with the with the low volume stuff or um, right. or have a color theme to something, that kind of thing. Yeah. So the quilts may be scrappy, but there's a plan is what you're saying. Rough plan, yeah. Rough plan, but still a plan. <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah, yeah. complete abandonment yeah. from um, that. <laughs> well, it, it's kind of like it's like let's set a boundary and then let's go wild kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yep, yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. that makes for original work, really. You know, and uh, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's a really good thing. So I would call you also uh, an explorer, then exploratory or experimental as well, because you've got a bit of a plan but you're, you're probably sitting there with your scraps going I wonder what this would look like if I do this and this and that it's not yeah. just ah, let's slow, sh slap the whole thing together and see what we get um, that's more me <laughs> I'm kind <laughs> of a slap together and let's hope for the best <laughs> on that okay so my next question then is so 
do you have a work area? And it looks like you probably do. And yeah. um, well, describe it for us. What kind of work area do you have? Like, is are you one of those kind of people? Is everything's in its place all the time, <laughs> or are you more like, okay, sometimes I clean up or? <laughs> Yeah. Well, this is, this is my, I'm trying to think, I was trying to think how I could describe it to you. Cause like I've got um, in Edinburgh, we'd say we have two reception rooms and this is the back one, but I think okay. you'd probably call it like the den, I guess in Canada. Yeah, I guess, or something. Yeah. Like it's not the living room. It's another room that's that size. Right. Anyway. Um, and I've redone it twice. I've done videos on both of them. So you can kind of see how untidy I am at the beginning. <laughs> and then every time I want to tidy, I go, well, the problem is really how it's organized. So I need to completely redo it and then I'll be tidy. So <laughs> um, that's kind of what I do. I get it messy and then I completely redo it. So, but I've got, um, because they've got like Ikea shelves, but oh, a bit yeah. dark, a bit yep. dark there. And I've tried to do more like little compartments to make me a little bit more, um, organized and then I made the design wall out of like cardboard and stuff and then I've splashed out on a you can't see it but it's a a horn uh quilter's dream table you know oh you yes yes up and yeah. Down. Oh, <laughs> yeah 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 that Ooh, was I'd favorite. love one of those yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just don't have room for it in my setup but and I would really like to have a design wall but I do not have a free wall in my area to put up a design wall I have design yeah, I didn't have the whole thing I had to do like a half one but yeah yeah I have a design uh shelf with hooks on it and that's where I hang pieces but uh, that's about it but yeah well it's it's nice to have your own dedicated space though too you yeah. know uh, in the house too and it looks like yours is a fairly good size space too I mean can we no, ever I'm really lucky yeah yeah it's big for, yeah until it we can. need it for something else <laughs> you can't have too much space no. for this stuff um okay so that takes me to what's your favorite tool and or technique if you have um, well so I guess those are two different things um tool I actually yeah I got it here is this called an awl I think. Uh, yeah, I call it a stiletto, but... Uh, or a stiletto. Maybe it's yeah. a stiletto. Yeah, I got it in like a kit that's like for making bias binding. I never use the kit, but I love this. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of use it, you know, to like hold the corner down when you're doing the, the corners on the binding or something like that, or a piece of... The technique that I like is um, foundation paper piecing. So if I have to like hold something in place, I can use it. I just You can also um, use it to, if you're not for quilting, but like poke it through fabric um if you want to put like eyes in a soft toy or something yep. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> or fend off people that are disturbing you while you're quilting you know exactly. I just yeah. Them. yeah 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 I have one of those too and I love it I I use it very much the same as you do for my binding corners and things like that and you know sometimes there are little pieces you got to get under the needle and you really don't want to use your fingers on that yeah so, you just can't work yeah you just can't yeah, do it that yeah. kind of thing so how about yeah. technique now you may have so, already touched on this with the scrapping but um well it's kind of two so <laughs> I kind of go back and forth between foundation paper piecing which is the only way I'm ever precise and like uh kind of my version of improv which is <laughs> you know just kind of let's just let yeah let's put that boundary on and just sew something together kind of thing so I like both right yeah yeah okay so if you had all the money in the world is there a piece of quilting equipment or tool that you would invest in yeah, I'm very jealous of your long arm. <laughs> I would buy a long arm for sure. I need the space as well, but yeah. So <laughs> when you, so when you quilt your quilts, you're doing them on a, your domestic. Yeah. You're yeah, not yeah. doing it by what they call it quilting by check. You know. Oh, no, 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 no. I do it myself. Yeah, I do have um, uh, what's it called? B a B seven seventy. It's a Bernina with a big throat space. Yeah. So it's better, but it, there's still some things that are. Yeah, difficult <laughs> yeah i know i know what you mean by that and yeah. yes i'm very glad yeah. that uh i have a long arm now too but you want to know something i mentioned uh quilting by check i have this thing and i know people who would be listening to this or whatever and hear me say this would get on my case probably but i really don't believe if you don't quilt it yourself no matter whether you're using a long arm or a domestic machine and no matter what your skill level that if it's going to somebody else to do that part of it, it's no longer your quilt alone. 
you know, mm-hmm. and I don't want somebody else touching my quilts. If, if I yeah. screw it up, if I make a mistake, well, you don't make mistakes. We do customizations, right? Um, with it, then it's, it's mine. It's, it's nobody else's, but I know that there are many people who, who do uh, send it to somebody, a long arm or whatever to do their own thing. And well, if they're happy with that, that's, that's fine uh, with it all. But for me, no, I, and I did all of my quilts on my domestic before, and I am not going to pretend I'm a good free motion quilter because I am not <laughs> with that. But I hope with the long arm, I will get better. But yeah, they're pricey items. Yeah, they are yeah. pricey. Yeah, Very yeah, pricey with it. Yeah. So I'm still surprised that I actually got one. Probably wouldn't have had it if, if it hadn't been for the fact we couldn't travel during COVID. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. was basically travel money because we okay. travel a lot. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's how I got like that, it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if there hadn't been COVID, no, I wouldn't have had a long arm. I would have yeah. wanted one, but no, I would still want it to travel. So yeah. Okay, so have you ever belonged to a, a guild or an online group uh, that you, you know, you learn things from or whatever? And how's that experience? Yeah, so I joined too many during COVID because they were online, so that right. was fine. <laughs> and then when we started opening up, I was like, this is too many. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm in um, one that physically meets like once a month and then two that are like online things and so that, that's that been really good yeah and the, the the physical one uh some of the folk actually live near me so we've got a little little group as well so it's nice well that's yeah. nice that's mm-hmm. nice i used to belong to a guild but i don't anymore but i do belong to several things online as well that, yeah. and that's you know i like that and you always get something out of those groups you know other people sharing ideas and the whole bit and um you know just you learn a lot uh from them so Okay, so what's your, okay, in, in Edinburgh, do you have a lot of quilt stores? There are some quilt shops, um, but I don't go to them. <laughs> oh, okay, so my next que- part of my question is, yeah. what's your favorite store for supplies and materials? Or maybe I'll rephrase that, but where's your favorite spot to get your supplies? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm a bit strange. Um, eBay. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> So I, cause I, I do like to buy other people's remnants, scraps, mm-hmm. soft cuts, whatever people do a uh, de-stash. So yeah. you can get like, it doesn't mean just small little pieces. Like people will de-stash like, like bundles of fat quarters. Like I had a, a video out today. Like um, mm-hmm. I had, a, I just recently bought a uh, 21 fat quarters and three half meters of William Morris fabric on eBay. Wow. And stuff, like someone was just getting rid of, you know, like, yeah. So I just would go there first, I guess. And it's probably also because I, you know, started quilting during COVID. So it was mm-hmm. like, let's go online. I did, I do sometimes buy online, like if they have a bolt end section or scrap bags from a quilt store or something. Right. But yeah, I'm happy for other people to go there and then I'll buy what they don't actually want to use. <laughs> yeah, actually, I have, I've done a lot of this because of COVID, just like everybody else. I mean, I have a really great uh, store here in Oshawa where I live that I go to frequently. But I have been buying a lot of stuff online and I try to uh, buy them from Canadian stores. And if you've ever seen my uh, my reviews, I do one every week of a different Canadian store. Uh, but um, I've never tried eBay. And oh, so much, yeah. I never really thought about eBay. So there's a new area. I'll have to explore that. So I'll be watching your video on your latest haul. Actually, I saw it come up today and I put it in my watch list uh, to watch it. I mean, whatever I can find here, you'll be able to find so much more in Canada. And if if you're watching from the States, way more there, because it's just like the amount of quilters is up. So then the amount of people getting rid of stuff is just more. (laughs) So, yeah. Uh, I'll have to definitely check that out. That's true. Of course, I'm a bit of a fabric or so (laughs) I have a lot of that going around, but you know, he who dies uh, with the most fabric wins. Oh, totally. So, yeah. yeah. I've heard that one. <laughs> or, yeah, person dies, whatever on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my next question for you then is, do you have any favorite experts or sources for information? And since you're so new to quilting, and uh, and I still do this too, I go searching for you know people who are the experts on this thing. So do you have any that come to mind that you go to on a regular basis? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's any I go to just now, but when I started, I was like YouTube 
taught kind of and like and and also podcasts I got into listening to lots of quilting podcasts so um Jenny Doan and Karen Brown obviously they made like quilting really accessible so I really like them yeah um Christina Camelli for quilting oh yes I um, talking about. she's really good yeah and then um the one that was like literally in my ear the whole of like 2020 um was the just want a quilt podcast it's, oh yes um, yes yeah pat sloan. Pat, no, no 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 it's, it's not pat sloan it's um elizabeth townsend guard she's oh a yes yes lawyer um a copyright lawyer but she's yeah. also a quilter and so she's just interviewed all of these people and also she's talking about copyright law and quilting and stuff but it's really good yeah yeah i listen, used to listen to her on a regular basis too but I don't know if she's still doing that podcast. She is, yeah, yeah, yeah. She she's, is? Okay. She's doing it not as frequently, but it's okay. still there. Yeah. And there was a whole big, she did a whole big stuff on masks. I didn't listen to all of that. Oh. The quilting, <laughs> I went back, but I was behind. So I went back and listened to all the quilting okay. stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What I found interesting about her, though, not just the people she was interviewing, but the whole copyright business that she was mm -hmm. talking about yeah, in there too that was yeah. really quite uh, something a little bit different you don't really think about that I don't think uh yeah. you know when you're doing a quilt or whatever but yeah, yeah. she also had people on like from thread companies or notions or so you just like it was almost like an education in like quilting terms and quilting things that I wouldn't have heard because I'm not going to read that many blog posts, you know? So it was, yeah, yeah it, was, it was cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, the same, I, I had a whole bunch of different ones that I followed. Uh, it's changed over time. You know, Angela Walters was one that I yeah. followed yeah, quite a good, bit yeah. on that. Yeah. I haven't watched a lot of hers. Actually, I stopped watching her when she stopped doing the midnight quilt show. Because I found those kind like of that, entertaining yeah. with her little glass yeah. of wine sitting over there. I always waiting to see if she was going to pour the wine on her quilt as she was <laughs> going with it. But uh, and plus yeah. she did a lot of stuff with domestic machine as well as long arm. But, you know, and so kind of I watch her how she did that. But uh, I haven't really been following her since she sort of left that format and is doing whatever she's doing now. Yeah, but, I think she does more live Q&A's now or something. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. yeah. So, um do you have any challenges or goals for the future in terms of any projects you might like to do? Yeah, well, I've, and I've got a few that are on the go now. <laughs> the big one that I'm working on is uh, my weight loss quilt. So yes. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to lose some weight. Uh, I started actually in November um, and I've lost 18 pounds. Wow. I'm doing, it's a block a day. Where is it? It's here. Um, so it's a block a day and it's basically like, if I eat healthy, then there's a low volume background. And if I don't, it's orange. <laughs> and then if I exercise as a circle, if I don't, there isn't. <laughs> and if it's, this is like 20 minutes, little blue one, uh, over 20 minutes to 40 is orange. And then over 40 is sick. No, yeah, over 40 is pink, that's it. And then I've got like blocks of actually an old pair of my jeans. So if I lose weight, I put that in. Ah. Um, and so I've got, I've got like a free starter pack on my blog that people download with the templates and stuff. So there's a whole group of us doing it. Um, so it's been really nice. It's like a little uh, community of us all. So how did you come up with that idea? Because that sounds fascinating. So um, it was, I saw somebody do, have you heard of a temperature quilt? Yes. Yes. So it's like, sometimes it's circles, sometimes it's something else. Um, but they're like recording the highest and lowest temperature for the day. And sometimes there's something about their mood in there. And I like, really liked how it looked, but I don't, I don't care that much about the temperature. <laughs> so I was like, hmm. And so then I was trying to think of how could I kind of harness the energy I have for quilting to losing weight? Because in the past when I've done it, it's been like the only thing I'm doing and like yeah. don't do anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously I didn't want to, just do that because it's boring so so I was like how could I do quilting and losing weight at the same time and eventually that kind of came out yeah <laughs> yeah well it's a really interesting idea I watched uh, your videos on your playlist for it uh as well so how long do you figure on uh doing this is this a year project six months or forever <laughs> no I hope not forever um uh I think the way I set it out because I'm gonna do the idea is like a 73 by 73 inch throw and so I think that's just over six months with the size of blocks that I'm doing. So that would be roughly Mayish time. But um, I'll see how I go because if I'm not at the weight I want to be at, I might keep going. Somebody suggested to me I could put 
rows on the back or, but also it's a square. So I could make it a rectangle. <laughs> I could yeah, make it yeah. add a few more rows and go, but there are some folk, we've got a Facebook group and there's some folk in there who are definitely doing it for a year. Um, and yeah, so it can be as long as a piece of string really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to be an amazing conversation piece. That's for sure. People see that <laughs> quilt and go, oh, that's an interesting pattern. Where did you come up with that? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, hopefully uh, the weight's off still then. <laughs> and they're not like, what? <laughs> yes. You can drape it around your shoulders and go, yeah, I used to fill this quilt. Look, I don't know. So, <laughs> I just think it's a really fascinating idea uh, to you. do that. But yeah. And I, I agree with you too. I mean, because over the years, I've, you know, done the same kind of thing, put myself on sort of a diet, I'll try to eat healthy, all that kind of stuff since COVID's hit. No, I just, my idea of diet now is don't go near the scales, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing, just stay away from it yeah. and, uh, you know, wear your shirts out, don't tuck them in. <laughs> <laughs> Flowing makes you look skinnier. <laughs> At least that's what I tell myself. Um, but I've suffered from delusions of grandeur sometimes but anyways back to okay now this next question i'm going to ask you i, I want to give you a little background into why i asked this question um a lot of people don't consider people who do what they call handcrafts so quilting knitting crocheting that kind of stuff they call it a craft they don't call it an art and a lot of people have this attitude that if it's not done in oils or in watercolors, if it's not hanging on a wall somewhere, if you're not selling it, it's not truly art. You're just dabbling uh, around, just playing with fabrics and things. And I don't believe that. I believe that anybody who does any of those kind of forms of, and I'll call them art, quilting, sewing of any sort, crochet, knitting, all of the whole bit, fiber arts, I guess we should call it. I believe that that's an art and I believe that we are artists. And just because our name isn't out there and just because we're not hanging in a museum or somebody's knocking on our door and giving us millions of dollars for our creations does not make us any less of an artist than those that actually do get that kind of money. So yeah. here's my question. And this one might be a little tricky. Since we're all artists in one form or another, how would you describe yourself as an artist? And what I mean is, are you experimental? Are you uh, traditional? Are you um, avant-garde or whatever? How would you describe yourself as an artist? Mm, I'm trying to think of how we put that in a phrase, but I'm, I would say, because a lot of what I do is is about like learning as I go. So it would be something about learning and then probably also something about transformation because that, that's kind of the thing. Like if I was, I don't, I don't always call myself an artist but I do believe that other, that, you know, anyone who makes anything that's self-expression is art. Um, but certainly a theme that's kind of gone through my life has been about transformation. So when I worked an office job, it was about, um, helping bring empty homes back into life and things like that. So there's just kind of like, and then the upcycling. So it's all about kind of like, let's have something that doesn't have much value and give it a value kind of thing. Right. Not, I, get it. <laughs> not, well, yeah. I get it. And I think if we're looking for a label as such, I would think the word you use transformation, so you're transformative artist. Okay. <laughs> that, that was what I said. And I'd also say you're probably as such um, experimental as yeah, maybe well not. because you know you're putting well you're using scraps to create beauty that's you know you're not following a set of instructions you yeah know, step by step and you know nothing wrong with you know doing patterns or anything like that but i think that there is a, a different level of uh, the quilters who do just a pattern they bought the pattern they picked the fabric did that now there's creativity in all of that i believe and, and, and the whole bit i yeah, do not precision. have patience for that <laughs> i think there's another level or another mm. type i don't know if i should put it in levels or not but no. when you go yeah. off on your own you know you like i often look at a pattern and go okay i like that that's my starting point but i will do alterations to suit, yeah, totally suit my here whatever, my personality, my mood, my creative spirit at the time, like that. And that I think is really what all artists do in any medium is, yeah. we, you know, we experiment, we transform it, we 
tap into our creative spirit, we make it our own and have our unique signature upon it. That, that might actually be why I don't like patterns. I thought it was like, just because you have to cut so much at once and you have to, but it's like, you're following someone else's instructions. So it's a little boring. Yeah. There's no such thing as quote police. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because, and that's the thing. And you meet a lot of different people in the way that they approach this art form. And there are those that do not want to break away from that pattern. And that's fine. If that brings them happiness and joy and they're, they're content with that, that's okay. There's nothing no, wrong with that. They're still picking the fabrics and they're like being really, yeah, really precise yeah. at doing it. Yeah. And then, you know, I oftentimes I break the rules too. And I think, I think a lot of quilters break the rules, you know, because we're doing it because it's Don't a hobby. Tell you about it. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we like, if it's fun. When it becomes, when it's no longer fun, then forget it, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. don't worry. When you I first got, yeah. have you ever had a quilt in a competition? No, no, Do you no. desire to have a quilt in a competition? I don't think so. I don't know. No. Um, it's not something I've really considered. Yeah, I think I've been too busy kind of going, well, I'm still learning stuff and I've, there's so much I want to do. And yeah, I never really thought about it, to be honest, yeah. I did because I'm a oh, competitive... I'm a kind of competitive person and Ooh. I did have one of my quilts in a show, but it was a local show. It was from my guild and they have one every three years or something like that. And it was an original. I created the pattern myself and I thought it was really, really great. Now, mind you, at this point, I've been quilting for about maybe a year, a year and a half. And it does hang in my bedroom uh, on the wall. I am very pleased with it, but now... Nah, then I saw the competition and went, oh, okay, no, what was I thinking here? But I have since changed my attitude. You know, it's not about winning a prize, getting the ribbon, the whole thing like that, because that's too much pressure. Like I said, I go back to what I said. It's fun. Yeah. Entering into a competition and being that precise and everything for it, I don't think that's fun anymore. Maybe it is for those people who like to be competitive. Yeah, I think but it probably depends what people are getting out of it. I think I've heard some people like it because they like the comments and the feedback, but um, you'd have to be, yeah, trying to achieve a standard that obviously yeah. is the standard they are judging. And if you're not that interested in that standard, then it's got limited value for you, kind of, yeah. I guess, you know. True. So yeah. I was, going, and I was also going to say it, I think for, for me, it's the challenge when I learn new things, you know, it's the, okay, uh, doing curves for example i took a class that had a quilt that purposely had a lot of curves in it because i was petrified of doing them because i figured i'd screw up and actually it turned out to be one of my favorite quilts curves aren't that scary i found at the time but you know i'm always looking for a challenge in my next project to see what i can do and it's only fabric it's only thread if you blow it or whatever say la vie move on yeah. you know totally. it's not that big a deal so let's talk a little bit then about your YouTube channel, which is called Scrap Fabric Love. So how long have you been doing the YouTube channel? So I think it's been since about January. It was linked to my other blog before, so it had another name, but it was totally different. Oh. <laughs> Step on it. so it's been about quilting since January, basically. You mean this January right now, this month? That we're in? No, last January. Last January. It's going to say, you're not, you have an awful lot of content there. I don't know. I don't know where I am or when I am. I've got two kids. <laughs> That's all of, we're all like that right now, I think. Yeah. We're all no, lost no. all sense of time. So Honestly. what was your, what's your goal or what's your mission in having this? If a mission makes it sound like it's really, really, you know, you sat down there and you had this mission plan. That's not what I mean. What I mean is what, what's your goal for maintaining a, a YouTube channel? Well, I suppose it's kind of two. I mean, on a personal level, it's about a flexible working schedule for the kids um, and that's working out. Um, but in terms of kind of what I want to put out there, I guess it's about um, trying to have something that's like approachable for beginners, gives people a bit of confidence to try something different, maybe show somebody something different they can do with their scraps if they, if anybody is still throwing them out, hopefully not, but um, you know, <laughs> so it just kind of yeah I want to and I also just kind of want to give some some fun out there kind of because I did I did find that when I started and, and I was looking at all this stuff I did find some good folk who didn't make me feel this way but there were a lot of 
places that I watched or I read or whatever. And it was, it was all about the rules, like as you said, and it can be really intimidating. And if that's the first thing you get when you're starting, you could just be like, you know, like if you don't have to be perfect, you know? So I just kind of want to be, yeah, kind of calming, kind of I'm learning with you kind of a voice, I guess. Yeah. Well, I think you've achieved that from the videos I've been watching on yours. I find it very much like that. It's very, uh, Oh, what I mean you. by low key, low key as in, okay, this is what I'm doing. You know, it may work, it may not work. This is what I'm <laughs> learning. Maybe yeah. it'll work for you. Maybe it won't work. That kind of thing. Because, I mean, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, as I'm sure you do too. And you get the ones that are on there, which are, they're intimidating because they never seem to make a mistake. When I started yeah. Idiot Quilter, I was, I called it Idiot Quilter because I was going to show my idiot mistakes. That I love that name. Yeah. And, I, and I still do. I show my I show my mistakes, my flaws, because and how I corrected it or what I did uh, with the kind of thing, because the same as what you just said. Uh, I don't want it to be intimidating. I want other people to enjoy this hobby. And when you first get into it, there is so much information. It overwhelms you. And there's so much not criticism, but there's just a whole level of standards that you think you're never going to achieve. And it just discourages you from even get started. And like I said, yeah. well, police just do your thing and it will make it, you know, unique and you'll learn from those yeah. kinds of things. So do you have any advice now that you've been into this now for about two years for anyone who's just thinking about getting started into quilting? I think the main thing I would say is like, kind of like you were saying with the curves, just kind of like try all sorts of stuff. Like you don't know what you're gonna like just because you've seen quilt patterns that are like a block, a block, a block, and they're all a certain way. Doesn't mean that's the kind of quilts you have to make. Like there's so many different kinds. So try an improv class, try your curves, try foundation paper piecing and see what you like. And then if you, if you do wanna get into being really precise or learning the rules or some version of the rules, then you can, do it in that kind of that sphere instead of going, oh, I need to perfect my quarter inch seam before I can do anything at all. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, you know, that kind of way, which is which is what it feels like sometimes. Yeah. And so it, yeah, it would be just try try and like let your style kind of let yourself find your your own style kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I like that. That's that's good advice because I do know that quilting can be very intimidating to some people when they're first starting out. I mean, I was a little bit intimidated, but I'm the kind of person that says, well, the hell with it, go with it anyways. So yeah. <laughs> try it in. So um, is there, oh, shoot. Oh, I'm still recording. Okay, good. <laughs> I thought I hit the wrong button, but it says it's recording. Okay, good. Uh, I didn't lose that. Um, I was going to say, is there anything um, else that uh, you want to mention while, while you're here? Anything that we should know about you or anything about your YouTube channel or just anything you want to share? Um, not sure. I guess that anybody's obviously welcome. Um, we're friendly over there on my channel. And <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've also got a, a blog that goes with the YouTube channel. So it's scrapfabriclove.com. And if you go in there, I've got um, a bunch of free patterns. Um, and you can, if you find the weight loss quilt um, post, if you're interested in that, you can sign up for the starter pack and join the Facebook group and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, just lots going on over there. Okay, that's great. And I am going to put the link for your YouTube channel into the show notes for this interview today when it gets posted. So people can go there and check that all out. And uh, yeah, and catch up on some of your videos. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm catching <laughs> up on your videos. So, well, anyways, this was great. Thank you so much for reaching out to me uh, for this because I really appreciate it. Then people don't have to listen to my musings that I've taken the place your of musings my musings. Are great. <laughs> So, well, I think people, though, would rather see, hear somebody else than just me at times. I mean, you can hear me anytime on there. So thank you once again for this interview. And uh, please don't uh, go away for a minute. I'm just going to stop the recording. Sure. But yeah, once again, thank you. And what's the temperature like? In, what's the temperature like over in Edinburgh right now? Uh, it's not freezing. So I don't know, but it's cold. Oh. It's probably, probably in the low under 10. I don't know. Oh, I, don't, well, I, really okay. don't pay attention. I really don't pay attention to the temperature. It's ridiculous. Okay. Well, it sounds like you're about the same temperature as we are here in Southern Ontario. So I guess, it's, yeah. I guess I won't be going to Edinburgh in the winter. So, okay. So once again, thank you so much, Karen, for this. And uh, 
I hope that uh, all of your adventures in quilting are great for you. Thank you. you. Thanks.